More artificial intelligence videos are being marketed to babies, babies on social media platforms. According to the Pew Research Center, YouTube use has jumped for children under the age of two more than any other age group in the last five years. Of course, that's raising concerns about developmental risks. And Dr. Douglas Vanderbilt is the Division Chief of Developmental Behavioral Pediatrics at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. He's joining us with more insight. Thank you for being with us. We always talk about how dangerous screen time is for kids, so it's interesting that this is even a conversation, but we have to be realistic that kids are using screens in a lot of cases, even babies. Yes, yes. Families think that they're educational, mm -hmm. and they really help the child, like, regulate and calm down. Uh, but uh, there's a hidden, hidden danger behind using them. Well, talk about those dangers, and especially as we're getting more AI-related content that's mm -hmm. not real content, really. Right. These are repetitive, uh, stimulating uh, types of videos that doesn't help the child learn, even though families think they, they might. Okay. And it displaces the child's uh, ability to interact with their caregivers and to manipulate objects around, uh, around them so that they can learn about the world. Which I think is interesting because I think most of the time it's telling parents to get off their phones and interact with their kid. But you're saying the kids are now struggling to interact with the caregiver. Right. It's a it's a both and problem. Oh. Uh, so the families, uh, uh, the, the parents are addicted to their phones and the children are not getting that interaction that's really important for them to learn and develop. Yeah. And let's talk about children's brain development yeah. uh, from toddlers to babies. What is that uh, stage where there are important marks of development and how is screen time impacting that? Yes. So uh, from zero to uh, two, uh, what you need is the interaction with your caregivers okay. to learn. Conden contingent responsive interactions. You look at something, you uh, see something, and then the, the parent can name it. The, the child can uh, then learn to regulate and to understand the world. Uh, screens uh, and this AI slop, as they call it, yeah. uh, really interrupts the ability for uh, that interactions to occur. Okay. <laughs> as a parent, sometimes you just want the kid to have something to pay attention to that's not you because you've got other stuff to do and it's real easy to hand a screen. And how is this different than, than when I was a kid and my parents would plot me in front of the television set? Right. Uh, you know, I don't see it as, as a, anything new under the sun. Okay. Um, I think the, the AI slop is like uh, uh, low quality uh, content. In my clinic at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, we see a lot of children with developmental behavior problems and the families really rely on these screens to help them self-soothe and right. calm. I try to encourage families to learn uh, skills and techniques to be able to help their child learn communication and learn what different strategies. What are some strategies. of those if people don't know? Right. Words are really important for that. Words. words. Yeah, use real words. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Talk. Pu putting a word to, uh, to, to that. Uh, finding other things like uh, uh, other objects, other uh, getting them interested in toys. Toys, and, okay. You know, manipulating objects and um, uh, interacting with the world around them is really important, especially amongst the kids I see at Children's Hospital Los Angeles who may have autism or ADHD. Mm, yeah. uh, this kind of self-regulation is really important. Uh, and families are key to being able to teach their children how to do that. Do you see the screens causing some of the behavioral or developmental issues? Well, there has been studies to show that excessive TV or uh, screen use is associated with developmental delays and mm -hmm. social behavioral problems. And so uh, there is a risk of too much, but it, uh, it's a correlation and not a necessarily a cause and effect because okay. some families, as, as you described, need these screens yeah. to help their children sure. regulate. But they can come in, we can talk about it. Uh, there's different strategies besides words and uh, interaction with toys. We also have uh, therapy techniques uh, and uh, medications if it gets extreme. That would be extreme, I would mm -hmm. assume. Yeah. You know, I don't want to shame parents because I do, it's, parents are so overwhelmed. I, I mm -hmm. do understand where this is an easy thing to do, it's, mm -hmm. but developmentally, you know, as a doctor, you're saying like this can have long term consequences. Well, what are you recommending uh, in terms of screen time? Is there a limit? Is there is there like a, an amount of time that is okay? Right. Well, the national recommendations is no screen time under 18 months. Okay. Um, and as you get into the uh, preschool years, you really need to think about what's what's high quality um, uh, interactions with media, mm -hmm. and that really re relies on uh, families co viewing and, and interacting with their child while you're watching it while together. You're watching. So mm. co-viewing uh, for those preschoolers. Um, and then, um, you know, interactive is important. Um, uh, relevance is important to the child. Uh, social modeling is important. Mm. Um, so uh, things that you might find on uh, PBS, like uh, uh, Sesame Street, yeah. or even Common Sense Media is a great place to go to That's find. That's our favorite. Yep, yep. To find where, what would be really appropriate for that developmental level. That is a great site, I yep. have to say. Some really great advice here, an important conversation. We know parents are just trying to do their best, but they're busy. Thank you so yep. much for being with us, Dr. Vanderbilt. Let's